Today we're going to take a look back in John. Um, back in John chapter number 16, if you will. And last week we stopped off at verse number 15 and John chapter number 16. And, and this week I would like to just finish up this chapter uh, 16 uh, through 33. Uh, now, and I would like to entitle this uh, this uh, message, Sorrow, Joy, and Overcoming. Can you just repeat after me? Sorrow, Sorrow joy, joy, and overcoming. And overcoming. You know, and that's what happens in the, in the state of man, um, mankind. And he has sorrow, mm -hmm. he has joy, mm -hmm. then he learns how to overcome. And if he doesn't learn how to overcome, he will remain not so, but so much in the joy aspect of it, but sorrow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and normally, you know, that one saying we used to say, when people are in sorrow um, all the time, that's somewhat in misery. And then when a person is in misery, as we often say, misery loves company. Uh, and, uh, so, but what our job is when we see someone in the dumps is uh, we are to pull them up, you know, let them know that you can have joy in the Holy Ghost. You can have joy in Jesus, you know, and you are victorious uh, and you are an overcomer. Uh, so um, uh, that's our job as a, as a saint uh, because we can have all type of sorrow comes in many facets and and we are just uh, identified and, uh, and to, to bring a person out of it. Uh, here, we, uh, as we can see from what we've already studied, is that the disciples here listening to Jesus, and Jesus has already told them, says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would not have told you. And uh, so, and he said, he's going to go away and prepare a place. And... And so uh, in that going away part, uh, they had that sorrow. He told them that he was going to go away. But he told them that it's expedient that he must go. Because if he does not go, then uh, they would not have a comforter. But if he does go, he would send them another comforter. Uh, so Jesus could not stay there here on earth continuously. He had a mission to do. And when your mission is accomplished, you have to go. You have to go. Uh, and so Jesus went after three and a half short years, he ended up going back to the Father. And, and he said that he would send another comforter. And, they, and he explained to the disciples that that other comforter was going to keep them. The other comforter was going to comfort them. The other comforter was going to be their advocate, was going to be their paraclete. Always right there, not so much by their side, but in them uh, as he is with us today. Uh, he told the disciples all that the, that the paraclete or the comforter was going to do. He started off in verse number 13 how the comforter uh, was going to, which was also the spirit of truth, was going to guide them and us into all truth. That he was going to not speak of himself, but whatsoever uh, that he shall hear, that he shall uh, speak it. And then he also told, uh, told them that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, the Comfort to the Paraclete, that He will show you things to come. And He also told them in verse 14 of John chapter 16 that He shall glorify me. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is going to glorify Jesus. Uh, then He said that for He shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. That though the Holy Ghost was to show them things, uh, whatever the Holy Ghost was to receive, he was going to show it to the disciples. He was going to show it to, to us. And here, picking up in verse number 16, sorrow, joy, and overcoming. Uh, one can go from sorrow to joy instantly. From sorrow to joy instantly. So that means you can go from joy to sorrow instantly. Here he says in verse number 16, a little while and ye shall not see me. Jesus is still talking to his disciples after that, um, the, the meal and um, now before he goes to, to the uh, new way to Gethsemane to, the, to pray. He says that a little while and ye shall see me and again a little while ye shall see me. 
Let me see. A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while ye shall see me because I go to the Father. And here we go. Oh, here we go again. I don't want to hear that. You know, I don't want to hear that. Uh, you begin to talk to your children or somebody else about life insurance or about funeral plans. And I don't want to hear that. What? Why? 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 I don't want to hear that. What? You want to keep you here forever? Uh, they can't do that. Neither can you. Uh, so we make plans in advance. We, we, we want to make sure that things are right. Uh, so what Jesus is doing, he's leaving them some insurance. He's, he's, he's letting them know and telling them how things are going to go. So when it does happen, uh, they will come out of that sorrow. They won't have that sorrow. Uh, they would know that they would have that they have joy that's due them, and all they have to do is ask, ask. Uh, that's what Jesus is telling them, and and He has already shown us, He's already told us, but yet we sometimes still have that sorrow that that just lingers upon us, knowing we have also joy. But here He says, "It's going to go away a little while, and then again, it says, a little while you shall see Me, because He told them the reason." He's going to the Father. He's already explained to them who the Father is because he said that if you see me, you see the Father. He says in verse 17, then says some of his disciples among themselves. We've already said for three and a half years they have been walking with him. They've been talking with him. They've been with him. They, they've really become close to him. And, and so now they, they're asking these questions among themselves. What is this that he said unto us? So it leads, it leads us and lets us know when we don't allow the Holy Spirit to, to have full control of us. You see where we can be just like them. We're like, we don't have a clue. And that's the way they're acting like now, right now. Though Jesus is right there with them and told them so much. He says that a little while and ye shall not see me. Again, a little while and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. Mm -hmm. Then he says in verse 18, they said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while. We cannot tell what he said or understand what what he is saying. And the disciples are just baffled. They, they, they you know, because they, they've already been healed folk. They, they've raised people from the dead. They've done all these things because Jesus has given them the authority to do those things. And yet they don't understand what he's saying by this simple communication. I'm going to go away for a little while and you're not going to see me. Then again, I'm going to. Come back and you will see me because I go to my father. They don't comprehend it. Why? Because they don't want to. And that's what it is. God is constantly speaking to us. And reason why we don't understand some things that's going on in our lives is why? Because we don't want to. It's not going the way what? We want it to. Amen. The question comes up. Why? 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 If we just listen, he would tell us. You know, bad things happen to good people. Yeah. Bad things happen a lot. But we turn around, the first question, of course, why? Why, why, why? So we're blocking everything else out that we can't receive what God has for us. So there's some communication. Instead of us always uh, going to him, we got to sit back. We got to listen to him and so he can speak to us. And more so as we get into his word, he begins to speak to us. He begins to, to speak to us. Verse number 19. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him. And then said unto them, Do you inquire among yourselves of that I said? A little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while ye shall see me. Verse 20. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament this is the sorrow but the world shall rejoice why 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 and ye shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into joy so he's telling them in advance what's going on. When, when Jesus was, was sacrificed, when he was whipped, when he did all that, what were the crowds doing? They were joyful. They were excited. They were cheering as he was going through all of that. 
be crucified. They they now 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 they they have succeeded. And yet the disciples were sorrowful. And Jesus is telling them in advance what the world is gonna is gonna feel like. And the world today is is in joy today. They're 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 joyful and all this stuff. Why? Because to us it seems like the world is going down to the, uh, like a tailspin. But yet the world seems to so be so like uh, excited and joyful. I wonder why. The Bible lets us know that the the God of this world. Is blinding those. You see, so therefore, yes, they can't see. They don't. They don't see the spiritual. They don't understand it. We've already read and studied that that the natural man can't understand the things of God. They're operating out of the natural, and sometimes we operate out of the natural too, and we can't see see the hand of God operating in our lives because it's all about us. We're thinking about us and and about me and about me and 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 or mine. But not really seeing the hand of God working and doing what he's going to do. But look at 21. He explains it to them. A woman, when she is in what's that? travail or labor. So that means she's pregnant, right? Okay, and has sorrow. So she, how, how come she has sorrow? Oh, she's in labor. Labor or sorrow. Okay. Because, there we go, because her hour is come. So she's going to have the baby, right? But as soon as she is delivered of the child or has the child, right, gives birth, she does what? Remember no more the, the anguish. Why? Joy now because a child has now come into the world. Why? Wow. Wow. So when a woman has a baby, when the baby comes, that woman is, is now joyful. Don't even remember the pain and everything it has to go through, but now joyful because a baby is right there in her arms. The joy. And now it goes on and, and says, it says, I don't know what it says. Okay, there we go. There we go. 2022. And ye now therefore having have sorrow. But I will see you again. And here we go, y'all. And your heart shall rejoice. And your joy, no man does what? Take it. Because man didn't give it. And man ain't gonna take it away. So that's the kind of joy that we've got to have. So, so therefore, when we feel as though that we're all down in the pits and all in the dumps and, and so sorrowful and things like that, because we know how to get sorrowful in a, just like that in a minute. But the thing is that we have joy. Yeah. Yes. We have joy, unspeakable joy. Amen. Deep down in our soul, Amen. we have joy. Why do we have joy? Because of Jesus. That's why we have joy. The Holy Ghost. Look, he goes on and says this right here, 23. And in that day, can you say that day? This is very important right here because it says, ye shall ask me nothing. Right now they're asking him, right? right. You shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I mean, this is for real. I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in what is it? In my name, he might give it to you. So, huh? We will give it to you. You show right. <laughs> Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, mm -hmm. He will give it to you. Give it you. What is Jesus saying here now to the disciples? I'm with you. So no longer are you going to ask me anything, but you're going to ask the Father. And the Father, whatever you ask, is going to give it to you. And you ask in my name. And so, uh, for example, I have no clue. I heard about a Maserati. But I don't even know what it looked like. I said, for example, y'all, I would like a Maserati. Is that asking? 
Where does that tell him? That's telling, oops. As an example, may I have a Maserati? Is that asking? Okay. Now, I said example, y'all, in Jesus' name, right? Uh, so, what's supposed to happen? According to what this says, right? Right? You know, according to what, what this pastor says, right? Is he going to give me one? And the nigga said, no. How come? How come? I did, I did, I, I, I asked in Jesus' name. But, uh, huh? You asked ghosts, you didn't ask Jesus. Oh, I asked y'all. <laughs> no, no, I said example. Okay, I want to make sure. I'm covered, by the, I'm covered, I'm covered. Lord, Lord, Lord. Okay. May I have a Maserati in Jesus' name? Okay. Now, will I get it? Deacon said no. No? Uh, not necessarily? What you say? What you say, uh, evangelist? I said if his will, if it's his will, you see that. Unfortunately, we, uh, uh, we 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 think just because we we ask, we're gonna get it. The Bible says, but as as a child comes to a parent and asks for something, are we gonna give it to that child? Because just because they're your child and you're asking. And then they're going to turn around and ask in someone's name, you know. <laughs> and he's going to say, what are you going to do? He's going to say, no, why? Huh? Okay, Dick says, it's not good for you. He says, it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not my will that you get. I, I mean, I don't want you to, to have it, right? You know, so therefore, what happens is when we, when we go to the Father to ask, then therefore, whatever we're asking, must be in the will of the Father. Must be in the will, in His will. You see, and, and so therefore, now the question comes, when I go to Him, how do I know it is His will that I have what I'm asking? And that's, and that's the big question that we might, that we might have. Uh, uh, um, since I don't have a clue about a Maserati, I don't need one. Huh? I, I don't have a clue what I'm asking about. I'm just wondering, just because somebody else has it or because I heard of it? Then I don't need it. Or whatever it is. But, but if I'm sick and I'm asking according to his word to be healed, shall I be healed? If it's his will. Absolutely. Everything must be according to his will. My mission may have been complete. Yes, everyone's praying for my healing. Everyone's praying that, that I may be delivered. Has anyone asked, is this mission complete? So therefore, your will be done. Isn't that what James says over there? In, in, I mean, let me find it right fast. But I got to find James first. And then I got to find the passage. And then, whoo, it's a lot of thens. Huh? Okay. Remember, we're all Bible students, and so if I find James, I can find at least the fourth chapter, maybe. Fourth chapter. James. Yeah, I can find that. And then if I, if I find the... Uh, somebody can say, yeah, if I can find the fourth chapter, and then if I can find down there in verse number... That's, that's not even it. I, I stop on that then. That's not it. Oh, here it is, right there. Look at somebody. Verse number. Somebody look at verse number. Uh, uh, verse number fifteen in chapter four. Somebody read that real loud. But that you ought to say, if the Lord will, He shall live, and do this or that. You see that? So we, we, what we, we, James says, we what ought to say. You see, if it's the Lord's will, you see, we do this or do that. Uh, so therefore, when we, when we pray uh, to Jesus, when we, when we pray to the Father, uh, asking or whatever it is, especially even whether it's on, on behalf of yourself or someone else, the Lord's will, because we don't know what the Lord's will is for somebody else even sometimes. Uh, uh, so uh, unless you know their exact situation, uh, if they are hungry, we got to feed them if we can. 
uh, and or or if they're naked and all these other things, and we can do something about it, then we will, we will, we, we're supposed to do that. And we know that's according to what? The Lord's will. Now, he goes on back here in John, back in John now. So he goes on and, and saying, so he went from sorrow and, and then in his joy. And now he goes on and says this right here in verse number 24. Hitherto, or up to this point, right? Or what is it, hitherto? Yeah, up to up to now, you ask me nothing in my name. Why? Can someone ask why? Up to now, you ain't asked me nothing in my name. Because he's right there with them. Right, he's right there with them. Y'all remember when, um, who was that guy who said, um, it was, it was a soldier came and asked somebody, yeah, yeah, is he going to pay taxes? Your, your master's going to pay taxes? And then, then, then God, then the, the, the disciple said, yeah, we're going to do it. Jesus wasn't too happy about that, was he? Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? I'll be telling. I'll be way off telling stuff. Okay, here's what happened. <laughs> he said, "Yeah," and then Jesus said, "That first fish right there, take a coin out of its mouth." Y'all remember that now? Okay, and then Jesus said, "Whose superscription is on it?" Y'all remember that? And then he said, uh, "Caesar's." Right, there we go. And then Jesus said that, yeah, render unto Caesar what's his, and unto God what's his. You see, so therefore, look, therefore that we ought to, 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 um, um, to, to render respect and honor to God whose seal God is on. You see, what do you mean? I don't see. God don't have no superscription on anything. I ain't talking about those 12 men that's on that, that picture. Yeah. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, pictures. He said, then how are we going to do that to God? Here's what, here's what Jesus says. And Paul, of course, writes this. His superscription or his imprint is on you. Why? Because we are to see the Christ in us. The Holy Ghost is in us. And then, so, so that way, we are to render our honor, who? One another. The Bible said we are to esteem one another. Because you, I, we belong to God. And then now, he says, hitherto, ye, uh, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive. That your joy may be full. So when they ask, and we know according to God's will, we know according to, to the Bible now and all the scriptures afterwards that we would receive, and they learned along the way uh, that it's got to be according to his will. Now we know when we ask it is according to his will, and when we receive because we ask, we are full of joy. Now he said full of joy. Now check this out. We already have joy. Joy, unspeakable joy overflowing joy. But when we ask God for something and he does it, boy, I tell you what, we are super joyful. Amen. Yeah, that's why you see folk running around and stuff like that. Because they got a testimony, they got to tell somebody. Amen. They got joy already, but when God has healed them, when God has already done something for them, amen, they just drop everything and they just want to tell somebody. Y'all remember the song, amen, when he said, hold my Mew, yeah. Yeah, hold my mew. I got to shout right now, you know. Because look, you just got to tell somebody or just have been, so whatever your expression is of joy, amen, what God has done for you. But yes, there is sorrow when your loved one leaves or is gone. Jesus told them that he's going to go away and they were very sorrowful. But they really couldn't understand some things that Jesus was saying to them because the Holy Ghost did not reside in them because Jesus was right there with them. They were sorrowful. They didn't want to hear that. They wanted Jesus to be with them always. To never leave nor forsake them. But now they have that sorrow as he continued. He explained to them that, that you will have joy. When I go away, I will send a comforter, another comforter, and he will give you that joy. No man can give it to you, but I will give you that joy. 
So they turn from sorrow to joy, understanding and knowing that Jesus will always be with them. Because Jesus himself saying that he would never be alone. Because the Father is with them. Because they're one. Look at verse 25. Now we're going to the overcoming. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs or figurative language. But the time comes, cometh, when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day, ye shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. See, Jesus is not going to pray for the, to the Father for us. For the Father himself loves you because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world again, I leave the world and go to the Father. So he was only here temporary. Uh, he was only here for a mission, a task, a purpose. And he goes back to the Father. So Father sends him. He's here. And he goes back to the Father. Mission complete. 29. His disciples, so while he was here, he made disciples. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speaketh thou plainly, and speaketh now we understand. We got you now. You see, we now I got it. You know how these have you ever like read the scripture constantly and, and especially especially King James, Lord. I, I'm not talking about picking up the Living Bible or anything else after it, but I'm just saying as you continue to study King James and you continue to study and, and look at it and, and be praying, Holy Spirit, you know, you, you're supposed to bring me light to this and give me understanding. God help me and, and you continue to be at it. And then one day the light comes on. And you're so excited because it's there all along. But what happened? Why did you get it then? Why, why wasn't it? It wasn't time right then. You had to go through something. And when you come back, you see, there it is. Some things are experiential. Some things we read is head knowledge. Head knowledge is one thing. We can quote a whole chapter if we really wanted to. Some people can quote many chapters and, and just word, verbatim. That's, that's remembering the scriptures. But when you know them, and in order for you to know them, you've got to know him. Yeah. And when you know him, and then when finally a, a, a scripture comes to life, and that's when you're so joyful and excited, and because you're excited, you want to share it with somebody. Somebody else say, I know that scripture. But they know it the way they know it. Because when you have experienced that thing and you want to share it, everybody ain't going to get it. But you know what? You still have joy. And that's why I don't know why you're excited, but I know why I'm excited. There's one song, I don't know what you come to do. And then it repeats and says, I come to praise his name. His name, I come to clap my hands. I come to stomp my feet. I don't know what you come to do. That's right, you know. And, and, and so because excitement and joy and, and because I'm coming to praise God on today, I'm, I'm coming to worship him in spirit and in truth. And, and I've been through so much, but Lord, I thank you. You see, that's, that's what God, God does in our lives. And, and as we do that, Jesus is being glorified. Because the Holy Spirit is revealing things to us. And as he revealed things to us, once again, his job is to glorify Jesus. So therefore, when we speak it, we got to speak it about Jesus. But what he has done for us. So, he says in verse number 25, these things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I shall and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you. 
because ye have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and am coming to the world. And again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Check out his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speaketh thou plainly and speaketh no proverbs. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? 32, behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered. You see, it's time, it's time now. He, he know now, now it's time. He, he's given them everything that they needed this far. And now it's time. He says, ye shall be scattered. And y'all know about that scattered part, right? He says, what happens that, y'all remember when, this, when, they, uh, when he went to the garden to pray and the soldiers came, right? And what happened? They scattered. One brother still had a sword on him, though. Who was that? Peter? Peter. Yeah, I tell you what. He, he, he pulled that sword out. He wanted to fight. He said, bring it on. And he, and he swung that sword, and he cut somebody's ear off. He didn't bite it off, y'all. He cut that guy's ears off, ear off with that sword, and that guy's name was? Thank you. Malchus. Absolutely. And, and, and then Jesus ended up taking that ear off the ground and putting it back on that guy's head. And what happened? It was restored. Restored. Perfect hearing. Jesus did that right before them. Right before him. He knows. Uh, and, and restored him. But the disciples just scattered. You see, because the enemy had come. says, every man to his own and shall leave me alone. Huh. Wow. And then, and yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. It's good not to be alone. Amen. You can be in a house all by yourself, but you are not alone. Because the Holy Spirit is with you now. The Comforter. You see, you walk somewhere, all of a sudden the, the hair on your back and your neck stand up. You, what you going to do? It's just your time to step up. Huh? It's your time to step up. You're going to start praying that the Holy Ghost. Yeah, absolutely right. This is spiritual warfare that we're in. Oh, yeah. Amen. And, you know, whatever the enemy try to try to come around, spirit and stuff like that, you got the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. You know, suck the to go down and say, come on, bring it on because the Holy Ghost is with you. The Bible says, greater is he that is um, in me than he that is in the world. So we got to continue to fortify by feeding the Holy Ghost with the Word of God. Amen. And He'll always keep you. He'll always keep you aware. And, and He'll always let you know what's going on and then direct you in everything. Amen. And then He says right here in verse number 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In Him, in Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. In the world ye shall have Tribulation. I heard Deacon sing. Trouble don't last always. last always. He sung it better than I would though, but it's true. Trouble don't last always. Said ye in the world ye shall have tribute. Don't be surprised that there is tribulation or troubles in the world. Second Timothy three and twelve. I got that little mark right there in my Bible. 2 Timothy 3 and 12 says this right here. After I find it. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. It says this. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Yeah, okay, it says this. But evil... 3 and 12. But evil men... But evil men and seducers... Or imposters shall wax or wax worse or grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's the world we live in today. That's the world we live in today. See, like every, see, like there's no real courtesy around. And when you find a place to ask some type of courtesy at all, that's when you have a tendency of just continue to go back to that particular place. 
You know, even in churches, it's kind of getting outside of the courtesy uh, phase, you know. But as long as we continue to have courtesy, continue to, to just love one another and continue to do what God has called us to do, people will continue to go to that particular place. Because you don't want to go somewhere where they, they're not treating you right. You go on down there to one of these fast food restaurants or like that. It, I mean, or you can talk to them on the phone to order something. It, you, you, it's like, man, you know, where's the type of, where's this, what do you call it? Where's the customer service at these days? There seems like there isn't any, uh, you know. So, so we have to make make sure that that, that we're doing what we that we're supposed to do to be that representative or that ambassador for God, uh, regardless of what they're doing. But customer service seems like it used to be the, the thing, but now it's like it's it's it's, it's so we call it for all something like uh, something for all. Who? Yeah, yeah, it's a free for all. Thank you. <laughs> it's a free for all. Y'all say, what is this, Jeopardy or what? Uh, it's a free for all. Uh, you know, uh, and um, but in the world you have tribulation. But look what Jesus says. But be of good cheer. Don't allow that to get you all down and stuff like that. I have overcome the world. He said, look, regardless of what's happening out there, I have overcome the world. I have a reference of Romans 8 and 37, and that says this right here. Romans 8 and 37. It says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In all these things, regardless what it is, over in chapter 8, it made a list of things. Over in Romans chapter 8, it made a list of things. But in all these things, and we can come up with any type of thing that we possibly can. He said, yet we're still more than conquerors. Him, Jesus. And we, by, by, by virtue of Jesus, we have the Holy Ghost inside, inside of us. Guiding us and directing us. When? When we surrender to him. When we allow him to have full reign of us. When we no longer can say that uh, I'm doing what I want to do. And we start saying I'm doing what God would have me to do. Because I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. What do you mean being led by the Holy Spirit? That means that you know whatever you're going to do, you ain't saying it. You know you. And if you ain't going to do what you would normally do, you know the Holy, Ghost, the Holy Ghost is working on you. He's telling you, he's speaking to you, and you're listening. So it's good to know that, that he's talking to us. Because if he wasn't talking to us, y'all, we better check ourselves out. Are we really saved? So we just surrender to him. That means constantly he will keep us, guide us, direct us, bring things out to our remembrance, guide us into all truth, show us things to come. You see, that's the Holy Ghost uh, job. That's what he does. That's, that's his ministry. So don't think that, that it's spooky when God tells you to do something. The Holy Ghost speaks to you or he speaks to somebody else. And they come and tell you something that, that, that he's already been impressing upon you. Don't, 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 don't say that's weird. No, no, no. That's us talking when he's talking like that. That's God. So if we really recognize and see what God is doing, see his hand moving. And you know what? God is always at work. He's at work in our lives right now. He's at work in this church. He's at work everywhere. Yeah. He's doing something. Yeah. He never rests. I mean, well, he did on Sabbath day. I think that's all that he really needed. Was it Sabbath day? Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot to make man. Because man was made on the what? Uh, six day, man. He was at work. He was he was he was something else, and he had to rest after that. <laughs> you know, so man, you know. So when we when we really think about this thing, I we know it's all the whole the whole six days. But when we think about this thing, we got to give God all the praise, Amen. all the glory, and we got to constantly uh, think about that because we can let other things cloud our minds. But when we allow God, to, his word, to cloud our mind or to continue just to be, be, uh, be uh, uh, taken by the word, then that sorrow comes. We know that we have joy. 
And if we have joy, we know we have we, we can overcome, that we are more than conquerors through him uh, that, that, uh, that has uh, uh, through him, through Jesus Christ. So that's who we are in Christ, in Jesus Christ. So because Jesus Christ died for us. Amen. He's very and he rose the third day morning with all power in his hands and authority. Amen. And when he's back, we went to the Father. He gave us that when the Holy Ghost is coming to us. And that happens when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So the disciples received it. They now understood it. But they have not experienced it yet. Not until Pentecost. The door to church is open. Let us stand.